stresses that the season brings. Um, so I have a word for you this morning. And what's cool about the, this word is uh, it's funny that when we're reading sometimes you can hear a scripture or you'll, you'll, you'll remember a scripture, you have a memory verse. And so you remember it and you repeat it and you say it. And then sometimes in your Bible study time, you start reading the chapter and you realize, oh, everything around that scripture is awesome. Amen. So I was reading from <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 is where I was going. But then as I was reading all around there, look at me, I got it, I got it going up. Thank goodness for this Bible, Bible app now. <laughs> So in Ephesians chapter 3, I wanted to share verse 20 with you this morning because, you know, it's, it's a verse that, that says so much. But I'm going to read to you from verse 17 because that's what leads us into verse 20. Verse 17 says, <clears throat> verse 16. <laughs> that's what... That, that's what I mean. They're all good, right? <laughs> all right, 16 says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. 
And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. That is amazing. Right? We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> now to him, this is verse 20, the verse I wanted to share originally. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Yes. Amen. So it's this, currently we are in the holiday season, but we're, we'll be celebrating Thanksgiving. And so we have so much to be thankful for just through those scriptures that when we have Christ, we have all that we need. Amen. Uh -huh. Let's bow our heads and pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you as your children, seeking to be in your presence, to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ, to honor you and worship you, to glorify you, to be filled with your Holy Spirit. We pray for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit rest upon us during this time, uh, during this service. Uh, we want to continue to worship you with our voices and our hearts, Lord. We look forward to all that you have in store for us this morning. We give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I'm 
Oh, oh, oh. 
several variations of this story for so you I'll tell you this part part of it you tell ask Hoku what her version is but he's saying he hits a pandanus tree he falls down into the river he's saying he's scared but his prayer going down is a prayer that many of us might want to offer in a similar situation Lord if you can save me if you're real and you can save me from certain death then I will follow you the rest of my life and that's what I did he became a kahu. He's written plenty of uh, uh, Christian Hawaiian songs. He's a very big leader in the Christian Hawaiian Christian community. In fact, if you ask Hoku, uh, that's one of the reasons why she's a Christian because it's sort of uh, kind of been passed down to her the, that faith and trust in the Lord is very, very important. I've put up um, translation. Uh, in English, to these words, 
So, uh, and you know, even if you say, for example, you're not very comfortable singing the Hawaiian word, uh, give it a try because it is a Pentecostal church. So you can always tell people you speak it in tongues, something that nobody understands. <laughs> Oh, 
announcements for you this morning and I wrote them down so I won't forget. <laughs> the first one is that uh, we will still be selling calendars for the youth group if you didn't get yours last week. Now's your chance. We'll be out there after service. Uh, calendars and Christmas cards. Um, we only have about six more packs of the Christmas cards so uh, don't miss your chance. Come and get them. Uh, the next announcement is uh, about the emu on this this Tuesday. So you have until 2 o'clock to drop off your turkeys on Tuesday. I want to say 12 o'clock because I know this church. <laughs> <laughs> but 2 o'clock is the cutoff time. If you can get here by 12, even better. So we recommend, of course, that you put your turkey in a tinfoil pan, two of them if you have them, a double pan, Make sure you season your turkey or else it's just going to taste like shredded turkey. Uh, season your turkey and then double foil. You can write your name on top. But what's going to happen is when you arrive, we will take your turkey. We will write your name down and we will assign a number to your turkey so that when we pull them out, we know exactly um, what you have. Also, it doesn't necessarily have to be a turkey. It can be a pork butt. It can be a duck. It can be whatever you want. Um, to go into the emu um, 
And I believe it's, is it $10, Mr. Carter, per person, $10 for the emu uh, to get your turkey cooked. Um, but also, you need to come and pick it up the next morning. Don't forget about that part, okay? So <laughs> I think we'll be pulling it out around 9 o'clock. So from 9 to about noon, if you can come and pick up your turkeys uh, the following day. Okay. Uh, and then that leads us into the next announcement, which is that we are having, we won't have Bible study this Wednesday. We are going to have our Thanksgiving Eve service here where we come and we kind of do what we've been doing here. We worship, we fellowship, we hear the word, and then we share a Thanksgiving meal together. And so, um, you know, these opportunities, Christmas Eve service and Thanksgiving Eve service, is a great opportunity to invite somebody, invite a friend, invite a neighbor, invite a co-worker. Uh, if the Lord has been putting it on your heart to share the gospel with somebody, this is a great opportunity to invite somebody. Uh, and you can come and share in a uh, Thanksgiving meal that evening. Speaking of the Thanksgiving meal, that I'm, I'm doing great on the segues today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving meal, we still have the sign-up sheet. We have about 9 or 10 or 11 people already signed up to bring a side dish. Uh, where is the sign-up sheet, love? A sign-up sheet or dessert. Um, Stacy has the sign-up sheet. You can find us. We'll be here. We'll be here somewhere. It'll probably be with me on the, the calendar table. So if you want to purchase a calendar and sign up, then perfect. Come and see me. And then this is my final announcement, that, and it's this. Um, this Saturday, we have three people, I believe, that want to be baptized. And so, so we're going to be baptizing three people at Coconut Island. If that is you, Maybe you want to come and join us if it, the Lord has put it on your heart to be baptized. Uh, come and see me at the calendar table, and we can add you to the list of uh, <laughs> baptism this Saturday if you if uh, that is you this morning. Eleven, uh, we're looking at 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Um, okay, I think that is all the announcements I have, so we will call our sister Chris up. She's got a bunch for you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Good morning. God loves you. Hallelujah. Um, Monday, people get together to pray for you. So please put your specific prayer request in the bowl back there. That's marked prayer requests. You can use any piece of paper you find. Uh, Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve. All right. I know he just said it, but sometimes you need to hear things twice. Um, yeah, five o'clock here, food, slap, yum. Um, Tuesday, bringing the emu, picking it up on Wednesday, right? If, if you missed any of that, feel free to ask. We will share information happily. Uh, Friday morning, the Yard Ninjas will be here, Woo! making this place beautiful at 8 a.m. Friday night, Celebrate Recovery will be here. Cleaning up your herds, habits, and hangups, so feel free to join us. The holidays can be rough. And I can't tell you how nice it is to have people that you can tell things to that aren't to say, well, you know, if I, and uh, also then they get on the phone and tell their friends, oh, pray for Chris because she's dealing with this and that and this and that, right? Um, it stays here. It's awesome. It's fabulous. A great place. It. That might seem strange. It, it's actually quite healing to be able to say something and have other people just say, thank you. Oh. Uh, men's ministry is on the third Saturday of the month. That will be December 21st. Oh, coming up. Um, and that is at 9 a.m. And they have breakfast. Thrift shop is always the first and third, except not the first of December because of the Christmas fair. And women's ministry is this coming weekend, the 30th, at 8 a.m. only on Zoom. So if you want to join, get the Zoom link from Stacy. We're having a Christmas fair. We currently have 30 vendors signed up. Really awesome. Um, 
I would say that almost every single one of them is a repeat vendor. So that's pretty exciting. I talked to one of the vendors on the phone yesterday and she said, um, you know, it's so exciting. The vendors usually do well. It's usually a great day. And are you looking forward to it, Chris? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it because it's a great time, you know, to fellowship, to see everybody, to wear my Christmas elf costume. So <laughs> you can wear a Christmas elf costume, too, if you want. Uh, we are currently on YouTube Live. Got a few people on there watching. Hallelujah. Um, if you want more information about our church or the Christmas fair, uh, also at newhopevolcano.com. Um, I send out a weekly email if you would like it. If you want to, um, you know, like when I send you the weekly email, I'm going to send another one about Thanksgiving Eve. You could just forward that to somebody and be like, hey, this is what's happening. Want to come have some Thanksgiving with us? Right? Um, okay, I think I covered everything. All honor and glory are his, Mahalo. Thank you, Chris. So even the craft fair, that's another one. I remember one year on the craft fair, we tricked our neighbor, and we told him it was a craft fair. And he came here and he said, we told him, this is our church, by the way. So we got to show him around the campus, and uh, they got to see what it's like here. So you can invite people to come for the craft fair and then uh, introduce them to a lot of uh, uh, believers in Christ. That would be a great experience. Um, I did forget to mention that the $10 that is um, used for the turkeys, you know, that's that money is for, it's used to maintain that emu, that big emu we got out there. I don't know if you guys ever had an opportunity to go and check it out, but it's a big emu. We've got a ton of rocks. Uh, we brought in some fresh dirt. We, we got to purchase burlap bags, and there's maintenance on the roof and on everything else. So that's what that goes towards, in case you were wondering. Um, and the calendars as well, They go to that, that those funds go towards the youth group, which uh, last year we were able to rent a, a water slide, if you remember, for the Backyard Kids Club. Yes. So that was a lot of fun. Um, okay, so that's all the announcements we have. Uh, we are about to collect the tithes and the offerings. And like um, Chris said, we have a website, newhopevolcano.com. You can give your tithe or your offering there. At the top of the home screen, there's a click-down menu that says Give Online. You can click on it and give your tithe or your offering that way. If you're in the building and you want to give your tithe or your offering, we have an offering bowl in the back where our brother Kale is sitting. You can drop it right in there. Uh, when you have the opportunity. Okay, we say all of that, of course, just to say that if you are visiting us for the first time, to so please hold back on your money and be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for this opportunity to join together in your name. It reminds us a lot about from the book of Acts where the church met and gathered. They fellowshiped, they sang songs, they broke bread, and they read the word of God. And so we pray this morning that we can replicate that, Lord, that we can love on one another. We can pray for one another. We can read your word and break bread and give thanks. We thank you, Lord, for this season that makes us hyper aware of the blessings that we have. Um, although that should be every day of our lives, we know that this season is all about you, Lord. It's not about anything else. And so we focus our hearts and our minds on you uh, this morning and each and every day. Uh, we thank you for providing for us and knowing our hearts. Um, we thank you for providing for us spiritual healing, physical healing. We thank you for providing for us financially, Lord, and for caring for us in each and every way, the way that you do individually. Lord, we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. We pray that we use it according to your will. We thank you so much for all that you do in our lives. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you can help me welcome our brother Happy sharing the word of God with us this morning. Man, I am stoked. What a privilege to be up here again. Okay, obviously I'll be doing today's sermon. You can tell because I've got my Sunday go to preaching shirt that, that Sandy bought me. Okay. Um, as you know, I, I just like to take a moment, okay, to do an eye check right down to your heart. Check to see, make sure them hearts were opened after praise and worship. If they're not, I'm going to come over and talk to you. <laughs> but it is a privilege to be here. Today's sermon is titled Counted All Joy. And as we were doing praise and worship today, I couldn't help but wonder, man, did Pastor Ray look at my notes? Because those songs he picked were right on, just filled all above, experiencing joy. Okay, got this thing turned on. Okay, so I believe we're, we're good to go here. Okay, you know, I... I I heard one time that there was this kindergarten teacher who was helping one of her students put on his cowboy boots. He asked, um, because he asked her for help, and she could obviously see why he was really struggling. Even with her pulling and him pushing, the little boots still didn't want to go on. And man, by the time they got the second boot on, she was wiped out. She was exhausted. And, and, and then, and she almost cried when she heard the little boy tell her, teacher, they're on the wrong feet. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> she looked, and sure enough, they were. It wasn't any easier pulling the boots off than it was put, putting them on. But she managed to keep her cool together. They worked to get the boots back on, and this time they were even on the right feet. Okay, so they're on a roll here. Except she she almost cried when the little boy said, Teacher, these aren't my boots. <laughs> Can you imagine? Man, she bit her tongue rather than get right into his face screaming, Why didn't you say so to begin with? So once again, she struggled to help him pull off the ill-fitting boots off his feet. And then no sooner had they gotten the boots off when he said, they're my brother's boots. Mom made me wear them. <laughs> now she didn't know if she should laugh or cry, but she mustered up the grace and courage she had left to wrestle the boots on his feet again. And then helping, finally once the suit, her boots were on, she goes to help him put on his coat and she goes, now, nah, where are your mittens? And he responds, well, I stuffed them in my boots. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of exemplifies a lot of our days sometimes. The various trials and tribulations we can go through. You know, just to, to think about the purpose for the trials that God allows us to experience serve a multitude of purposes. Firstly, they reveal the true condition of our hearts, exposing the areas of needed growth in your life. And you could be blank, uh, blank things on, on your handouts if you wanted to. So like a mirror, trials reflect our weaknesses, fears, doubts, and sinful tendencies. And it, you know when the stress hits the fan, what comes out? What comes out? They provide an opportunity for self-reflection, repentance, and surrender to God's transformative work in our life. Secondly, trials deepen our dependence on God and strengthens our trust in his sovereignty. Because it's in them times of uncertainty and adversity, we learn to, to lean on him for guidance, comfort, and provision. Our faith is stretched as we relinquish control 
and acknowledge that his ways are are higher than our ways, it tells us in Isaiah 55. Then lastly, God has equip us to comfort and support others. What we do here. Others who may be going through similar challenges. Our own experience becomes a wellspring of empathy and encouragement, enabling us to walk alongside fellow believers with compassion and understanding. So we're going to be taking a look at the trials and things that come up in our, our lives today. So this morning, I'd, I'd like to explore some of those specific examples of trials that we may experience in life, drawing wisdom from various biblical examples combined with scripture and spiritual principles to help us count it all joy. Through this deeper understanding of trials, we can find hope and encouragement and growth in the middle of life's adversity. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this moment you've given us in time. We pray that we would have open hearts, Lord, to experience the fullness, the dwelling of your Holy Spirit within us. Father God, give us ears to hear. Bless us with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. We thank you once again for this timeline. We pray that the sermon is presented with all of you and none of me, Father God. But mostly we pray that you be glorified. Amen. So we're searching for like a, a biblical meaning of, of joy. It says that joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that is dependent on who Jesus is rather than who we are or what is happening around us. It's not about our circumstances. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit and is given by the Holy Spirit. Abiding in God's presence and from hope in his word. <clears throat> so that joy we experience is all about God. Understanding biblical joy, and, and even though it may be confusing at times, because joy doesn't always come only in the best of times, or those circumstances don't always come in the best of times. Biblical joy is dependent on who Jesus is and God's presence in us as the Holy Spirit. It's accessible to us even in the worst of times. And the most awesome thing is it can never be taken away from us because it's not of our own nature. Always have access to God's so for me, the importance of, of joy okay, is that without it, we'd be left to rely on our circumstances in life to make us happy, uh, to bring us joy. Oh, man, that is not a good option. That would work out great during family vacations, most of the time, and when things are going our way. But what happens when life gets hard and life gets tough? We need a joy that we can hold on to no matter what is going on in our lives. A joy that is always accessible, accessible to us. That joy is not found anywhere else other than in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Savior. With Jesus, we know that we will be in heaven with him for eternity. And even while we're still here on earth, we have the Holy Spirit to help us and bring us joy when we need it. Thank you, Lord. Unfortunately, for the unbeliever, this world is all there is. It's all they have to hold on to. Of course. How sad is that? It should have been still. There's joy to be had that, that you don't know nothing of. Yet, 
But if you come to Jesus Christ, you will experience it. So let's talk a little bit about persevering through the trials that we experience. Now, trials are not random acts of suffering. Rather, they are refining fires that God allows in our lives to bring forth something beautiful. Opportunities for us to grow. Just as gold is purified through intense heat, our faith gets tested. And it's strengthened through those trials. I'm here to tell you, if this was an easy gig, okay, everybody would be doing it. Like I said before, I love what First Peter says in chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. But that genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this means that we can embrace this perspective that trials become an opportunity for spiritual growth rather than a cause for the despair. So when those things come up, it's like, oh no. Opportunity to get closer to you. That I've not experienced as of yet. Thank you for this lesson, Lord. It enables us to draw closer to God and rely on His strength and develop resilience that sustains us throughout our journey here on this side of glory. Some examples of those that experience disappointment. That we can glean from the Bible. And, and we bring this up because life often brings unexpected disappointments, yeah? Unmet expectations, shattered dreams, failed plans. We may face disappointments in relationship or our career or our personal aspirations. This makes disappointment one of the most common examples of trials in our Christian life. Take a look at Joseph in the Bible. One of the biggest biblical examples of a person going through numerous trials and becoming better for it. Joseph, who experienced betrayal and slavery and imprisonment, yet emerged as a mighty leader in Egypt. Remember the story about Joseph? Did he go through some stuff or what? Sold by his brothers into slavery. Becoming that slave and out of fire. That in prison. Ministered to those that were there. Or finally he had the opportunity that God gave him to come before the king. ended up becoming the, the second most prominent person in all of Egypt. And at the end of his life, Joseph said to his brothers after being reunited through circumstances that God <coughs> provided, he goes, as for you, now remember his brothers sold them into slavery. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about the present result to keep many people alive. The deal about suiting up and showing up and being obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our life. I'm going to be blessed by it in ways that we can't even imagine yet as well as being a blessing to others in ways that we may never really ever see. 
So Joseph is a wonderful example of what God does for our, our uh, for us in our lives. Just as God was with Joseph throughout his many trials, God is with us as well. Through those hard times, Joseph learned to be gracious toward his brothers. He learned to show love and grace to them, even though they did not deserve it. And he learned to trust God throughout his life. Therefore, in moments of disappointment, we can find comfort in trusting in God. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We have this available to us each and every moment. Why go out trying to deal with something in our own accord and in our own power? Is with us. He's already shown us the way. If we could get past our pride, you know, long enough to humble ourselves. Moses is another example of one of God's people um, being, <clears throat> being put through many trials and gaining endurance uh, from them as well. For those of you that don't know, Moses is the man who led the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt. The book of Exodus is all about God's people coming out of slavery and making their way to the promised land. Again, throughout the book of Genesis, we see that Moses and the Hebrew, Hebrew people encountered lots of trials along the way. Each of these trials served as a way for God to purify and show himself to the Hebrew people and a way for them to grow in their faith. How about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I love that story. In the beginning, in the book of Daniel, there were three Jewish men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they stood up for what they believed by refusing to worship a false god that was ordered by the king. So in, res or in response to that, King Ned. Nebuchadnezzar orders them to be thrown into the furnace to be burnt to death. But their faith and devotion to God were so strong that they survived. Not even a smell of smoke. Not even a singed hair on their head. Not even any evidence of burnt clothing. God was with them. We read in that story. These men had such strong faith in this trial that God protected them when they should have died. Because of their faith, the king says this in Daniel 3, verses 28 and 29. And it's an indicator what a difference okay, our lives can make by pursuing those things God puts in our heart. Nebuchadnezzar says, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants, who put their trust in him, violating the king's command, and surrendered their bodies rather than serve, um, serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree to any people, nation, or population of any language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses made of rubbish cheap, because there is no other God who is able to save in this way. Can you imagine King Nebuchadnezzar making a proclamation? Throughout his land, which was massive, that we need to be on our guard. Another story I want to glean from is from the book of 
Ruth. I should talk about Naomi and Ruth. Now, these women were both widows. Naomi's husband died, and as well as her son, who was married to Ruth, had also died. They were in a foreign land. So instead of leaving Naomi to go back to her people as Naomi instructed Ruth to do, we see Ruth replying to Naomi in chapter 1 by saying, Do not plead with me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you sleep, I will sleep. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Imagine the love Ruth had for Naomi didn't come from her own self. It was inspired by God. So we see other examples of a beautiful thing that happened. Yeah, they had lots of hard times together. But we see throughout the book that God blessed them and took care of them at every turn. I wanted to, to get on a more personal life where you and I live each and every day. Doubts and questions are, are natural aspects of our faith journey. We may wrestle with theological uncertainties, doubts about God's goodness or his presence in our life. You ever been there? One biblical example is Thomas, who doubted and um, doubt, who doubted the resurrected Jesus until he saw the scars in his hand. What did Thomas say when he saw those scars? My Lord and my God. Jesus responded to Thomas with compassion, meeting him in his doubt and strengthening. I'm here to tell you, the word's here to tell you. It's okay to have those doubts. They're going to come up. Satan may be tempting us. The world may be throwing circumstances in us that, that you can't believe we can overcome. Whatever. So therefore, when doubt arises, we can bring them before God. Seeking his truth and resting in the assurance that he understands our human struggle. Hated us. Hated us. He gave us the specific DNA that each of us carries to life in this world. I know. About discouragement. Discouragement often accompanies seasons of prolonged difficulties and setbacks. And to be discouraged just kind of takes the wind out of your sail. We may face financial hardships, health challenges, or prolonged periods of waiting, which is a hard deal for us humans that want it right now. I want what I want when I want it, and I want it right now. Also, the life of Job serves as a profound example of persevering through some extreme discouragements and suffering. Remember the story of Job? And Job 42, um, chapter 42, verses 10 through 17, we see that despite Losing his wealth, his family, his health. Job remained faithful and found restoration in God's faithfulness. Where he received tenfold more than he ever had. So in moments of discouragement, we can take heart and assurance that, that God is our strength. Our trials, they do have an expiration date. It's not going to be correct. I love 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 
verses 16 and 18, where Paul writes, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen what we see that we need to hold on to. Trusting and walking in our faith, knowing that God is there, even though we may not be aware of what he's orchestrating and what we're going to experience in our lives. We might not do anything without him. We say we're believers, but are we walking in faith? Are we truly walking in faith, utilizing all the promises and blessings that he continues to give us and remind us of each and every day we turn toward him? Look at frustration. I never get frustrated. <laughs> Hurry up, we're going to be late. Mm -hmm. Frustrations <laughs> arise from difficult cir circumstances, challenging relationships, or unmet expectations. But in the face of, of frustration, we go back to Moses as he served as an example. And despite leading the injured, despite leading the Israelites through the wilderness, Moses encountered constant grumbling and rebellion. He's led these people out of Egypt where they've been captive for 100 years, being abused and, and forced to hard, hard manual labor on their way to the promised land that God is giving them and they're grumbling. Why'd you bring us out here to die in the, the, the desert? And I don't, I know I couldn't have done what Moses had done without ripping some lips off of people. <laughs> <laughs> when frustration overwhelms us, we can seek God's wisdom. Not our own wisdom. We've got to seek God's wisdom. So we can practice patience. And embrace his peace that tra transcends all understanding. His peace, you often hear me say things when I'm referring to that stuff out in the world. It's just stuff. We can see the spiritual realm of things going on in the heavens being orchestrated for us so that we can then manifest those things here on earth. God is with us. Who can be against us? Amen. But you got to trust that. you got to stop trusting yourselves. i got to stop trusting myself. Okay? Why? Because my best thinking got me in some really, really ugly places in my life. Hard to, to committing myself to the Lord. We don't have to, to worry about that. One of our favorite passages comes from Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, where it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we can let our request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. How many of you are aware of experiencing the peace of God? The true peace of God. 
Man, it is incredible because it doesn't matter what stuff is happening out there because we are no we know we are walking hand in hand with the Lord just like in the garden and he is with us and he's given us Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins and he sealed us with the Holy Spirit that empowers us to do everything everything that his word is provided for us to do Failure. Talk about failure because it's another universal human experience we, we we experience. We're going to stumble and fall in various areas of our life, whether it's relationships, academics, career, or personal endeavors. Relationships. It doesn't matter. We're going to stumble. And even though failure is one of the most common examples of trials in the Christian life, hear this. Failure doesn't have to define us. I'm going to say that again because I've, I've experienced lots of folks getting stuck in this failure. It's just a failure. I'm never going to amount to it. Wrong. Wrong. We don't have to be defined by those worldly situations and circumstances. That's the devil's doing, not God's doing. The Apostle Peter experienced a profound failure when he denied Jesus three times the night before his death. Yet through repentance and God's grace, Peter was restored. Peter, do you know? Yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? I don't love you. You know, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Failure can be stepping stones to growth and transformation if we humbly learn from them and place our hope in God's redemptive power, His grace, His mercy. That's the best for us. He created us. We're soldiers. And we're his children. And someday we're all going to experience the fullness of his glory when we get to the other side and he takes us home. But right now we've got some growing up to do. Each of us, including myself, got some growing up to do. Look at loneliness. It's a profound human experience that can leave us feeling isolated and abandoned. We experience that loneliness and it's like we encapsulate ourselves, shut ourselves off from every person, place, and thing because we don't want to deal with anything but severing the hurt of that loneliness. No, even Jesus experienced some deep loneliness when he was in the garden when his disciples fell asleep and all alone. Yet in those moments, Jesus turned to his heavenly Father, finding solace and strength in communicating with his Father. In the same way, we too can draw near to God, knowing that he promises to be with us always, even in the loneliest moments we may experience. Psalm 34, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. And also in Matthew 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things, that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end. 
is with us always. All we got to do is open the door and want to hang out with him. We'll look at adversity. Adversity encompasses various hardships, such as persecution, health issues, financial struggles, and other and or relational conflicts. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul exemplified steadfastness in the face of adversity, enduring beatings and imprisonment and opposition. Are you mindful of what scripture tells us? Of all the things that Paul had went through in his missionary journeys and establishing new churches. I think what, what blows me away the most is when he gets almost beat to a pulp, left for dead, dumped outside the city. Believers and followers come minister to him a little bit and he gets up. What's he do? He goes right back to the place where he was from because of his love for us that Christ had for us. Paul recognized that in his weakness, God's power was made perfect. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I think he's just saying that lastly. When adversity surrounds us, we can find courage in God's power, knowing that He will strengthen us to overcome beauty. Isaiah 61, verse 3 echoes that. To consult the morning Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, so that he may be glorified. But this is all about so that God our Father can be glorified. Trial of temptation, common struggle that we face each and every day. We may be tempted to compromise our values and thoughts and our sinful desires or drift away from God for a while. Jesus himself faced intense temptation as we read about his journey in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, knowledge of God's truth and his word, we like Jesus and also use God's word to rebuke Satan, to put him in his place. For the mighty God we serve. First Corinthians 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear. I want to go off on this scripture every time the Lord puts it on my heart. We are sinners because of the fall. But the deal is, we don't have to sin. Choice that we make. And look at this. We make that choice to sin even though he tells us, scripture tells us, that he, he's going to give us a way out if we would just follow through. We can endure this trial. We can endure this tribulation. Walk through this happy because it will make you stronger and get you closer to me and empower you to do what I have planned for you. Are you a true believer? Implement this verse in your life. Trial of fear. Fear can paralyze us and hinder our progress in the Christian walk. We may fear failure, rejection, fear of the unknown. You know, during my 
my formal education, I once learned that the only legitimate fear we as human beings experience was the fear of falling. And all other fears were of our own making. So if you've got a fear of snakes, if you've got a fear of spiders, if you've got a, a, a fear of whatever, uh, hang in there. Uh, you can entertain that fear as much as you want, but you don't have to. Don't go around snakes or spiders. In Exodus 14, we read, read about Israelites facing crippling fear when they stood at the Red Sea with the Egyptian army closing in behind them. Can you imagine they're being led out of Egypt? Finally, oh, thank you, God. You know, stop to take a break in front of the Red Sea. Moses is standing in front of the Red Sea, you know, praying. Okay, Lord, now what? You know, kind of stuck. Okay, and the Israelites look behind them. Oh, no, here comes all of Pharaoh's army charging at them. We're pinned in. There's nowhere to go. We're going to be slaughtered. Or so it would seem. God intervened. In you know, one of my most cherished readings in the Bible is when we read, but God. Because you know there's something major going to happen here. But God came to the rescue. He reminds them, as he reminded us, that he is with us and that we need not fear. Isaiah 41, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Fear not. So fear is one of those examples of trials in Christian life that can uh, be overcome by faith and faith alone. Only our faith can overcome. Only our faith can get us to walk up to that snake and pick him up. Which we read about people doing, okay, in the Bible, and yet being unharmed. By embracing faith over fear, we can experience that peace that surpasses all understanding. And the neat deal for me is if I picked up that snake and it was poison and bit me, Guess what? I get to go to heaven. Okay? Take me home, Lord. It's my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, I want to talk about grief and loss. We're all experiencing that right now. Taking home. Yeah. I this. One of the hard things about being in the body of Christ, body of because of the love that we have with one another. Good morning, and I miss that. Because of the example that they were set, because the Holy Spirit has dealt with them. We can only take refuge and find that joy in knowing what? Where'd they go? Be with the Lord. And we're going to see him again. And it's like, hey, happy, what took you so long? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like God. Again, we bring up Job. Job. As he experienced profound loss in his life, his children, possessions, and health. Talked about earlier, and even in the midst of his grief, Job clung to his faith and, and found peace and, and God's presence. Even when he was hearing from his wife, "Why don't you just curse God and die?" Some awesome support. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, when we we face grief and loss, we can turn to God, knowing that it, He is near. That's the broken hearted. So comfort us. We know that because of 
verses like Psalm 34, verse 18. It says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Save such as have a contrite spirit. Or in John 14, verse 27, where Jesus tells us, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give you? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So if we can kind of reel in everything that we've covered so far, need to search for some personal application for our lives, especially if you're experiencing right now a moment of one of those hardships and adversities, claim it, claim it. As we have learned, trials are an inevitable part of the Christian walk, designed to define and strengthen our fight. And by understanding the purpose of trials and drawing wisdom from biblical example and God's word, we can go ahead and navigate through those challenges and still experience hope and resilience and unwavering trust in God. Man, what a place to be. What a place to be. You know, in today's scripture verse from, from James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4, James tells us to count it all joy. He encourages us to evaluate the way we look at our trial. We're no longer victims. He calls us to develop a new attitude. And all an attitude is, is a position. Either I'm on this side of this issue, or I'm on this side of the issue. Either this is a good thing or it's a bad thing. We can have an improved attitude that considers these trials if we understand and look at them through God's perspective. How many of you like hearing the verse, God is not done with me yet? Praise you. Thank you, Lord. For it gives me hope. It gives me hope each and every day. So our writer in this verse wants us to know and expect that trials of various kinds in our life are going to happen. And we should be prepared and not caught off guard when a, so a sudden trial comes upon us. Jesus told his disciples and also reminds us in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So as we put these things together, <laughs> let's trust. Let's walk with him. Not just on the day, but on an hourly basis, on a minutely basis. Let us take joy in walking hand in hand. Let us realize that he is in us and he has instilled the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. He has sealed us with that Holy Spirit, okay, as a promise that we're going to reach the kingdom. And until then, he empowers us to take on any challenge or trial or tribulation that comes our way. Don't wimp out. I tell that to myself more so than, than anything I know. Being called a woman. But we have Jesus Christ, our leader. Amen. Now, if you're here today or you've been watching on YouTube and have never accepted or experienced the confidence and assurance 
of knowing that someday we're going to be with heaven without knowing that God is with you and always a present force in your life. Okay? Um, because you haven't opened yourself up to an intimate personal relationship with God, our Father, for whatever reason. That intimate relationship can only come by believing in his son, Jesus Christ. Now is the time to come. Now is the time. I have some unbelievers in my mind. What keeps you from offering your life to Jesus Christ right now? Right now. The Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So therefore, you want those things that we, we experience as far as the goodness of God. Please pray with me this prayer. And us in the congregation will pray with you. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I need you. I need you. I want you to be my Savior and Lord. I accept your death on the cross as the payment for my sin. And now, in my life to your care. Thank you for forgiving me and for giving me a new life. Please help me grow in my understanding of your love and power so that my life will bring glory and honor to you. We pray this prayer because we want to come along. and disciple you to share all the joy that we have experienced in our journey with what God has given us so that we can really give it to you. So connect with somebody, another believer, and utilize God's provision for what he has stored for you. Church, Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you to confess that there are times in our lives when our souls become weary. Circumstances sometimes feel too heavy to carry. We also admit that there are many days that we struggle with believing that the clouds are even going to part, as well as wondering if we will ever see light in our lives again. Lord, we know, we know that you are faithful. We know you never leave us in this suffering. We therefore come and ask that you would use the hard times in our lives to create that fountain of joy in our hearts. Help us to fix our days on eternity and a joyful day that we will see you face to face. Lord, we trust in you. We thank you for your name. Ask that your joy will fill us up in knowing that greater are you that is in us than you that is in us. And we choose to claim your love and grace and mercy always. Father God, we also just give thanks for your awesome provision. And we thank you for the saints that have prepared the food in which we're about to, to consume. But we thank you for always taking care of us. We thank you for, for giving us the folks in that ministry for it. That's on their heart to want to be a Father, it all goes to your glory. It's in your son's precious name that we pray. Everybody said, Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
It was, uh, you know, you take a, you take God's word, you got to make something out of it, right? You got to apply, you got to put it into real life. And I was sitting over there thinking, you know, you're talking about trials, temptation, discouragement, frustration. I was thinking about our marriage in the early in the early days. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> we, we went through a period of time. We, I wasn't even thinking about if we're going to make it this week. I was thinking, are we going to make it this today? Are we going to still be married when we head up tomorrow? Fortunately, Lonnie is a very patient woman. <laughs> so if we get this up here, it'll be our 50th wedding even this property, many of you know the many of you know the story. Happy was talking about faith. We walked up on the property. We didn't have a building fund. We didn't have anything. But we felt like the Lord said, "Yeah, this is supposed to be yours." With eight people that made that decision, and I went to the to the meeting and we didn't have money. And the lady said, what? And the lady couldn't understand. Why am I wasting her time having a meeting to acquire property with zero dollars? Only to find after one year. In fact, I was so disappointed, discouraged. I On the Monday that followed this meeting, I resigned with Pastor Wayne. I said, I led these people so far off, off the path because I thought it was God's will for us to be on this property. Everybody, these other seven people, believed me. We, I actually went to the meeting. I was so far but we don't have the property. And, the, and Wayne counseled me through that. And one year later, most of you know this story, the lady called and she said, actually it was the lady's daughter, are you still interested in the property? We said, yeah. I said, yeah, we have a, we, we started a building fund. We have eight hundred dollars <laughs> and that fun but i don't want to waste your time and, and she said you know the glorious words she said oh well my mother doesn't want to sell it anymore my mother wants to give it and Lani and i were sitting with somebody yesterday they had they had the news that that uh, tests were done. There was cancer found. Not only in one place, two more places, two more places. Can't walk, can't see very well, but has the joy of the Lord because she knows that she's going to walk out God's perfect plan. That is, you know, that's why you can get scripture. We have to, we have to have that. Just like he hit my favorite passage. Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. But you got to ask yourself, you have any problems, are you trusting in the Lord? And if you say, yes, I am, or you say, no, I'm not, then trust in the Lord. Then you say, yes, I am trusting in the Lord, then the passage said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Are you giving all your heart? Are you giving half your heart? Giving 25%? Because the passage says, in order to get the payoff, cha-ching! You have to trust the Lord with all your heart. Are you leaning on his understanding and his perfect plan? Or are you still leaning on your own plan? Because he said, lean not on your own understanding. Very practical stuff. At any rate, this brings a, a formal conclusion to this morning's service. We're glad that you came. All of you who are here in person, all of you who are there on YouTube. Uh, we're going to sing one more song. If it's very appropriate for what we heard in Happy's message today, if you like singing, please stay in the room and sing. If you want to sing as you walk out to the hospitality, please feel free. If you're going to exit and go home today, please be careful when you get to Highway 11, whatever you decide to do. God bless you and have a great week. <laughs> Oh,